Sorry about the long delay on the intro there, guys. Had to plug in my microphone. Hello, hello. <laughs> How are you doing this afternoon? It is 4.49 p.m. Central Time on the 22nd of March, 2023. What a way to start the update. I hope this is just a preliminary trip up. A, it's okay. It's all right. We're live on Twitch and we're recording. I'm going to be uploading this over to YouTube. It's still Wednesday here in the United States, by the way. Thursday already internationally. We've got a fair amount of seismic activity to talk about. This is you know, a nice increase in seismic. A lot of people have been contacting me about when am I going to do an update today. I am sorry for the delay, guys. Let me get a display capture open here so you can see what I see ever so slightly better and see what I'm talking about here. We have a 6.5 to 6.9, but it's at 6.5 now. Down in South America, right at the Chile-Argentina border and on the opposite side of the planet, about the same sized earthquake, 6.5 to up to 7.7 .7 in some instances, which struck last night up here at Afghanistan, felt all the way down in central India, being contacted by several people from India, letting me know that it was felt all the way to the south and that it was reported in originally at 7.7. .7. Now, that's a huge downgrade if it is at 7.7 .7 originally. I mean, it's, it's an unheard of downgrade if it's taking it down to 6.5. Regardless, it's two huge earthquakes on both sides of the planet on land felt by a lot of people in each area, even though each area technically is sparsely populated, which is good news. Now, that's just the big earthquake activity, and we'll look it up in just a few minutes. So if you're down here at the Chile-Argentina border, I'll get into that in a second, as well as over here in the Mideast, going down to India, what to look for over the next few days. But before we get into that, let's just recap everything else which has struck. We had a Nice amount of fives spread out across the plate boundaries. And I need to get the plate boundary map open here just so you can see it. If you're a new person and you've never seen it before, the red lines are the spots between plates. It's like a crack at the surface that goes all the way down through the plate down to the underside of the plate. And it's really just where the two plates or multiple plates meet up. And so you have to keep track of these lines because this is the path that the earthquakes flow along as they flow out and away from where our deep earthquakes are hammering in on the underside of the plate. And when I say hammering in, I really think that there's a wave underneath the plates that's focusing in on itself, a standing wave, but a concentric standing wave. And you can see this very same thing happen in round shaped pools that experience earthquakes. We just saw that in a uh, earthquake last week in video that surfaced showing the same thing happening, not on such a grand scale, of course, since someone's pool in their backyard during an earthquake. But what I think is going on down below the plates is similar to this hammering in. That's our deep earthquakes that are raised high off the globe. So when you see these deep earthquakes and they're raised high off the globe, pay attention to what happens next to them afterwards. And so these earthquakes marked in pink here struck yesterday, deep fours. Now next to them, up above, next to it, on the red lines here, plate boundary, a new 5, 5.5, pops up next to the deep earthquakes which struck yesterday. Same with over to the west, next to Indonesia, all the way over on the north side of the plate boundary. Deep earthquakes, next to them, shallower, larger earthquakes by one magnitude. Up to the north, same thing, up in Japan. Deep fours, shallow 5.2s on either side. And then, let's talk about this. Japan has been hit multiple times in the past two days. Izu Ridge and a 5.6 up off the northeast coast, south of Hokkaido, or just on the northeast side of the North Island, or South Island. But right where both sets of rings overlap, right here next to Tokyo. I have a warning going for a few more days, four more days, for up to a seven to strike. It hasn't hit yet. It's the halfway point between the two sets of quakes. Now, that's not all that struck, guys. 
We also got 4.0 level activity up here right along the coast of California. Up to 5 it could be. It's at 4.5 USGS 4.5. So that kind of tells you it probably was just a little bit bigger than that. But So coast of California also got hit as well as Alaska. Yukon got hit last night. 4.0 level activity. They downgraded that. We go down to South America, back down past the big earthquake I started the update talking about, and South Sandwich, as well as the coast of Chile, also hit with multiple fives. Now let's get to Europe. Check this out. Even the untrained eye will be able to see this in about two seconds. So these are the earthquakes over the last 48 hours or so from the USGS. Here's our big one. And then we have a spread of fours. Oh, I'm sorry. We're looking at 4.0 and greater earthquakes over the last 48 hours. And it's a stepping stone path of somewhat the same sized earthquakes within a half magnitude of each other all the way across, going to a pinnacle point up here at Switzerland, the Swiss-France border. And all about 4.5 to 4.9 going across the plate. Now, before we go any further, I want to show you the rest of this wave video. If you're a new viewer, I want you to look at the screen right about here as we have a standing wave form in a tank. When the wave gets down to the end closest to us or to the other end, it reflects back into itself and pumps up the wave height. And the more you pump more energy into the tank, the bigger the wave gets. And what I want you to imagine each one of these waves as is a new 5.0 or a new 4.5 to 4.9. And the equal spacing on these waves in the tank matches the equal spacing of the earthquakes going across a huge distance. And what we're dealing with here is some kind of standing wave that's causing the earthquakes. So this is the force that causes the quakes, the wave. And the wave has spread out all the way up to Switzerland, right at the Swiss-France border. I have not looked up the quake up in Switzerland, but I would like to just quickly go put it in on Google Earth. Go see real time what's there. Go investigate. Sometimes there's a reason for the earthquake to strike at a specific spot along the plate boundary. Sometimes there's volcanic location there. Sometimes there's a man-made facility there. Whether it's a mine or a deep quarry or electrical generation in some instances. And I'm going to turn on our place marks, our borders and labels, just so we can orient ourselves properly here in Switzerland. Okay, all right. Now, what, what do we have here? We have some kind of museum. A tractor museum there. Well, I don't think the tractors are causing the earthquake. I ho sure hope not. Now, oh, okay, all right. Well, now when I look at the greater area, of course, we're on the edge of the European Craton. European Craton makes a bend down through France. You can see it here. Let me turn off all of our other place marks just so you can see. Coming around the outside edge of Europe over to the east, we have Romania. We have uh, all going all the way up, all the way into Russia even, but or Ukraine. And around the outside edge, you can see it then makes a bend through Central Europe, going through Germany and then back around through France. Now, there's a huge river basin that flows through here. You can see it. But right along the edge of the Craton, you can also see it bends right down to the south, goes down to the Pyrenees. So right here, there's also something else which we've talked about previously, which... Again, this gets into previous discussions which I've had about other shapes and other formations in the plate that are here north of Switzerland, north of Italy. But it's all about orientation and about viewing what we're looking at here and what it could be. But I'm not going to get into that now. Just want to stress that we're on the edge of it and we're on the edge down to the southwest. So that's where our 4.4 earthquake is. The rest are back over to the east, over at Romania, back down to the south, down to Greece. Our warning, our second warning for a big earthquake stands for the coast of Greece, southeast of Italy, right here at the Ionian Sea, just south now, going off the west coast of Greece is where the warning stands, and it's up for 6.9. A large 6 to low 7. 
I hope I'm wrong. And that too stands for the same amount of time, next four to five days, just like Japan. So we've got warnings going at both spots. And I would just say we're expecting a seven here due to the fact that we had two sevens here and two sevens here. Now, how are they all connected? Let me show you. Go back to the USGS red line map here. So two sevens here over the past two weeks, two sevens here last month. I would expect at least one out in front, equal spacing across the plate boundary that this is all breaking back from Tajikistan down into the plate boundary, which explains why the people down in India felt it. And down here in India, uh, let me turn on our, let's see, I think USGS has a function to turn on the satellite view with towns or something like that. There we go. Okay, so here we are. It was felt as far south, far southeast of New Delhi. See where it says Jaipur? I, I probably am butchering the way that's pronounced, but several people writing me anywhere from New Delhi down to Jaipur and even further south. I, I didn't know the names of the towns, but now that I see them, okay. Anyway, the earthquake struck up here, and it, this is, or these are, the plate boundaries that come through the area, through the area of North India. Now, we're told that it was a 6.5. There is no way that they would get heavy, intense shaking down at Jaipur when we've got just a 6.5 up to the north. So it's dubious on the 6.5 magnitude reported from the USGS when we've got people firsthand reporting all the way down there. And it's not up for debate because it's just so many people. Now, up to the north, a new 6 is struck, USGS 5.9. Back up in Tajikistan, 200, maybe, well, actually more, 350 miles north of the Afghanistan quake, which struck earlier today. So let's recap. A huge earthquake struck, USGS brought in at 6.5, a bunch of people who actually live in the area wrote me directly down below my videos and posts, which you can go read yourself, confirming that it was much bigger, first of all, and then telling me about the damage it was caused all the way down in India. Now, why would that happen? Well, the plate boundary is clearly breaking there, just like what broke over in Turkey. So, over in Turkey, a month ago about, a month ago, just a little bit over, two sevens struck here at the plate boundary between Africa going up into Turkey itself. There's no red line there to mark a plate boundary. They said it was just a fault moving. But a surface fissure fracture formed 150 to 200 miles long, a crack in the ground. And it was big. It wasn't just a little crack. It was a giant fissure that formed that far or more. I proposed back then, a month ago, that a new plate boundary was either forming along the Anatolian Fault or the Anatolian Fault itself was going into motion making it like a plate boundary because we're between two plate boundaries coming out of Iran, going over into Turkey, two sevens plus God knows how many fours, fives, and sixes broke in of a line going across from this pinnacle tip here down to the southwest, across and back up into Iran. All right, now that's what happened a month ago. Then, right after that broke, back over here, Tajikistan had a seven. It broke. Now, they stopped reporting the aftershocks. So we didn't see a line of quakes coming down to Afghanistan because of lack of reporting. I guarantee it. Do you think there was just a 6.9 and no follow-up quakes? Where were the aftershocks? Please. They didn't have them on the feed because they didn't want to have 20,000 fours and fives pollute up the feed and make it look like there's a sh earthquake. Pardon my language. Ah, that's a science term, guys. Commander Data with my swearing chip. Yes, Captain. Thank you for installing the swearing chip, sir. All right, so a boatload of earthquakes. They didn't want to add on to the feed from Tajikistan because it would look like, and it would confirm, that we had a lot of earthquake activity going on, and they don't want to have a thick book trying to think of a way to rephrase this a thick book of earthquakes for this year stand out against all the others because they have to keep status quo and keep everything normal have you ever heard a seismologist ever say that there's an increase ever 
Never, right? Because they have to maintain a status quo of the same number of earthquakes every year. Because there's never an increase or decrease. It's always the same amount. Now, we know that there was probably aftershock activity coming from the Tajikistan 7.0 earthquake two weeks back. And I propose to you that that went down to the south into Afghanistan. I'm imagining it with my mind because I have to imagine it because it wasn't reported. It's either that or there was just one single seven with no aftershock. Please. So there's a line of quakes that obviously went down to Afghanistan. Then Afghanistan broke with a seven. And then everyone down south felt it because that must have been the connection point between the plate boundary and where it broke. Previously up in Tajikistan. What's halfway between Tajikistan and the red line to the south? Anybody want to tell me, what would you just say if we, if we were to fly a straight line from the earthquake up here marked in blue down to this red line? That's where the big quake happened, halfway between. And I would just say that's connecting between. That the plate boundary broke up to the north. Which means we will now see a series of earthquakes go across. Let me get over to Google Earth now and look. We will see a series of earthquakes go across North Iran, South Turkmenistan, right in here. And guess what already started to happen? Right in the middle. In the middle, east of the Caspian Sea, a new five broke. But let me show you on Google Earth because the USGS map, by the way, USGS map, look at the earthquake in Iran. Notice there's nothing there, right? Now let me show you what's really there. Down to the south, the USGS has the plate boundary marked, right? I stand by this. I've said this for almost 10 years, that really this is its own plate. And they don't have the plate boundary marked on the north side, even though they should. This is not a river. These are mountains. These mountains have bent and twisted like a flowing river because technically they are still moving like some kind of fluid. Over a long period of time, even rock flows. And it gets bent and contorted with this seismic wave that's passing through the area. What seismic wave? I think it's like this, down in the plate, electrically induced from Mother Earth. Electrical in nature, but physically transferring through the plate. And when it goes through an area like this, it bends and twists the plate like a flowing river. So that means, back over here, It's breaking around the center of the plate like a rock in a river, diverting the flow or a fork in a river. And now on the north side, we started to break up here. Why? I think something's happening here. Between Tajikistan, the plate boundary, between Turkey and the plate boundary, that something's going on right through here that's fairly significant, seismically speaking, and that we may see new, additional, extremely large earthquake activity as some kind of new plate boundary might be forming between Turkey and Tajikistan along the south side of the Caspian Sea through Tehran. Or just straight up through the Caspian Sea. But I would think it would follow along the edge of the plate. Something's going on between here. Let's turn our borders and labels on. This is phenomenal. This is a big claim on my part. Something for me to say that we have to watch for. That we already broke from back here at Turkey all the way across the Anatolian, which is really just the mountain range, back over to the Iran border. Now we've broken over here from Tajikistan south all the way to the plate boundary at North India and Pakistan. And we're going across the north side of this, whatever that you want to call this, even though USGS doesn't have anything marked there. And I would think something's forming between Turkey and there on the north side. We already have the plate boundary on the south side, the red line. The north side, there's nothing marked. If we get any new large earthquake activity, it will break out in between the current earthquake activity. 
which would put Turkmenistan and Uzbekistan in the mix, right in the middle. And who's this? What's this? Azerbaijan, Armenia. Azerbaijan, Armenia, Georgia in the mix. In between where we've currently broken with sevens, we would see new sevens in the near term. The next week, the next seven to ten days, maybe two weeks. I I don't normally do two-week forecasting. This would be a long-term forecast to watch out for. So why did the people in India feel it? That's what led me to get into this. It's a big break to feel. If it was a 7.7, let's just call it a near 8, or the plate boundary broke from Tajikistan down to India. Either is troubling to me. Both would be the sign. The fact that it broke in Afghanistan, south of Tajikistan, north of the plate boundary, that to me says something's going on. Look, there's too many large earthquakes going on through here over the past few weeks to to dismiss. Cannot dismiss it. And I'm looking for a large quake right out in front of it. Look where I'm looking. Over here. At Greece. My warning stands at the Ionian Sea, which is right... Where's the Ionian Sea? Is this it? Ionio. Yeah. Ionio Pelagos. The Ionian Sea. So right where the plate boundary comes in there, that's why I've got the warning going there. That's where the flow is going to go and reflect back into itself. It's been going back and forth. Big earthquakes do there, upper 6 to low 7 at Greece. We've already got our 7s over at Tajikistan. we got our 7s in the middle of Turkey. We should have our 7s over to the west at Greece. Something's going on right across through here. I hope it's not a new plate boundary forming. That would mean additional large earthquakes for the foreseeable future, if not the forever future. Forever is a long time, for, but that's what plate boundaries are. They're fractures between plates. And they're accompanied by large earthquake activity spreading across them. Now let's recap. I know, look, there's a lot going on, guys. Big earthquake down in South America haven't really delved into yet. Big earthquake over in Europe needs discussion because we could be seeing additional very large earthquake activity across the area north of Iran and just east-northeast of Turkey and west of Turkey. So Europe and the Mideast is not out of the woods at all on this, I don't think. And this hasn't even counted that we're still pumping in new energy with new deep earthquakes. We're still pumping in from the other end of the tank. Still adding more energy into the tank, and that flows out in a way as well. So there's new pushes coming across. If this was just on its own, it would be one thing, but we're constantly being fed new energy from the new deep earthquakes hammering in. Hence all the fives spreading out right now, mid-range fives and so forth from the deep earthquakes in the West Pacific. Big earthquake warning in the coast of Japan, right off the coast of Tokyo, next five days. Now let's talk about South America down here, because we had a warning going. Two different warnings. One for this. To look at the Chile-Argentina border with Bolivia, right in the middle, for a significant sized quake to strike here. The reason we were looking in the middle of the plate, we have to go back to the start of the week because we got another 6.5 to 6.8 that struck up at Ecuador four days ago. When that hit, I told everybody to watch here and to watch down at our Travels Underneath Point. Now look what happened today. Travels Underneath Point got hit. One magnitude less. 6.8 up to the north. 6.5 in the middle. One magnitude less. 5.6. Or actually, it's not even. It's 0.9 less down to the south. All three areas hit all the way across. Now, as we go up to the north, it's like bookends. A 5.6 on one side and a 5.5 to 5.6 on the other. These two struck in the past two days on either side. So do you see it? 5.6 and 5.6 on either side. And then the sixes in the middle. Let's look at all the smaller quakes and get them connected in between. And what you'll see, well, I... It's kind of hard to see because we're looking at six days' worth of quakes. Here, two days to three days' worth of quakes shows us the standing wave spreading out all the way across South America. From South America down to the South Sandwich Islands, where Travels Underneath points to. Now, why does Travels Underneath point there? Well, first of all, we're fed energy from up to the north. 
What I've seen in the past, and that's why these are arrows here, is once we get down to where about the 5.6 is, we have a bunch of volcanoes. They're current, not eruption, but they're there, and they're weak points that, that allows the energy or the wave to go down and underneath South America. And sorry, guys, I almost sneezed into the microphone as I was trying to talk there. Okay, let's go ahead and uh, refresh the Volcanic Ash Advisory Center and just see what's going on with the volcanoes. I haven't checked it in a few days. Dukono in Indonesia, that's regular, and it's only 7,000 feet high. Nevado del Ruiz Volcano up in Colombia. Now, this one sent out a pretty big blast. They actually called it a heavy volcanic ash blast the last time I checked, but it's not going now. That's good news. Santa Guido, that's in Guatemala. And how big was that? Let's see. 15,000 feet, not that big for that volcano. Ebico up in Russia and Sanjay in Ecuador. Popocate Patal in Mexico. Large volcanic ash emission. What's this? Hold on. Large volcanic ash emission. Okay, I, I look, they're saying it's going up 22,000 feet. I know the volcano itself is like 10,000 feet high, but if it's large, they don't normally have LRG next to this. It normally would just say something about a sporadic puff large volcanic ash emission observed from satellite webcam moving northwest at about 20 nautical miles from this summit okay all right it is a fairly large blast that's down in mexico right next to mexico city the others fuego in guatemala okay santa guido on the list a few more times and this is all today we are not even out of today yet luatolo over in indonesia 6,000. that's pretty small but it's back on the list Suwanizajima in Japan, Semeru in Indonesia, Ebico again, Santa Guido again. Wow, guys, look how many there are for just today. Look, I'm just, I'm, I'm not, okay, here we are finally to yesterday, the 21st. Let's just go back up the list. That's a fair amount. So the number of blasts, while not seeing very many new volcanoes on the list yet, the number of blasts is Increasing, I have to say that's an increase. Now, where are these volcanoes? I can just quickly show them to you over here. We have Semeru over in Indonesia. Uh, we have Dukono right here in the middle of all these earthquakes, right here where the letter V is. As we go to the north, we have Suwanizajima and Sakurajima side by side in South Japan. Luatolo, I forgot. Uh, Luatolo is right down here in Indonesia next to East Timor. Going up past Japan, up into Russia, we have Ebico Volcano right here on this little island south of Kamchatka. I have a warning going at Vanyamanov Volcano here in Alaska. Nothing going on there right now. Once we get over here to the East Pacific, we're in Mexico. And here is Popocate Patal's location and with its large blast. Santa Guido and Fuego are side by side here in Guatemala, once we get into South America, then we have Sanjay and Reventador. They are side by side here in Ecuador. Uh, Nevado del Ruiz Volcano is right here where our arrow is pointing over to the east. It's now come back on the list. And finally, Sabancaya is down here in South Peru. Let me really show you what this all means. All those volcanoes with the number of blasts increasing. Let's get a USGS plate boundary map open. There we go. And go back over and take a look. So volcano over here at Indonesia, blasting. Volcano here at Indonesia, blasting. Up to the north, we have two volcanoes in South Japan. One up here in Russia. Skip over Alaska, skip over the United States, nothing going there. Down to the south, right here in Mexico. Further to the south, where the two plate boundaries meet exactly, in Guatemala. And then further to the south. Do you notice anything about where the volcanoes are erupting? First of all, they're along the plate boundaries. But where there, there were plate boundaries meet other plate boundaries. So over to the west, northwest of the Pacific. No excitement when it comes to volcanic activity in a long time. We haven't seen any big blasts here in, I'd say six months or maybe even a year but when i see the number of blasts go up 
I start to also simultaneously look for the size of the blasts to go up and new volcanoes that we haven't seen on the list in a long time to come back on the list. Speaking of volcanoes that we haven't seen on the list in a long time, Villa Rica was on the list last week, down here to the south, just right next to where our travels underneath point is. Just a small blast, but it appeared back on the list. Let's go look up this location down at Antonio de los Cobreras. Cobreras? Cobreras! I'm from the United States, y'all! <laughs> Hey, uh, do you need a new citizen down in Argentina? I'm on my way. Anybody need a flatmate? Uh, me and the Duchess will bring the cats. Okay, uh, yeah, I'll split the rent with you. You can be my translator. I'd love to go down there. I've seen a video of this place. Uh, Argentina in general, just beautiful. Now let's take a look, see where we are. Oh, we're right next to a salt flat. Of some kind. What's going on out here? Looks like some kind of mining, maybe? That, that to me, looks like some kind of mining. I wonder if there's any kind of oil or gas going on. What else do we have here? What are these? Some kind of tailing ponds. Ah, uh, yeah. Tailing ponds for a giant mining facility and extraction facility of something okay is there anything else here nearby that's worth mentioning other than that all right i don't see anything worth mentioning i don't see any large oil pumping operations i know they have some down here in argentina but this does not look like oil to me at all you can definitely tell an oil pumping operation when you see it so that's good news. No volcanoes nearby directly, but let's get our place marks turned on because I know there's a huge amount right over here. And we'll measure... Oh, I said there's no volcanoes nearby. Whoops. How many miles is this? Let's see. I always look 40 miles because magma chambers can shift over a long period of time. We're at 38 miles to the volcano. We're right on the edge of what I consider to be the extreme limit that a magma chamber could move in relation to the surface. Or the surface to move in relation to the mag magma chamber. Now there's probably more around here now that I know what to look for. Like this over to the east, just 20 miles to the east. That's probably an ancient version of what's down to the south. I would say probably because we don't have a place mark on it, but just a guess. Either way, we're right next to it. There's also an ancient volcano over to the far west. Let's go take a look here. See how far that is. That is 40 miles down to the point. Down to the peak, 40 miles. These are ancient. These go back a long way. These would be back before the Ice Age. The lava flow down to the south looks younger, but the rest look ancient. Now, these are fractures in the plate, so I wouldn't be shocked if Mother Nature seeks out this spot for the break to happen. What is our depth on this quake? 209 kilometers. Now, wait a second. This is what I would consider to be a deep earthquake. People ask me all the time, what do I consider deep, quote-unquote? And it's an arbitrary number that you could pick, but I consider anything over 200 kilometers a deep earthquake. And that's just because, on average, if you look at the average thickness, supposedly, of the plates, measured with VLF, very low frequency, that it's about 200 kilometers or so. Just on average. There's some spots where it's 400 kilometers thick, others where it's 150 or 100 but on average, it's about 200 kilometers thick. So I imagine, just when I think of a deep quake, when it's over 200 kilometers deep, it's in the magma down below the plate, in the asthenosphere, the semi-melted magma down below the plate. So we get a deep quake that's 6.5, and it's down below the plate. We can see a shallower, larger earthquake from this. 
Let me turn on the shell feature on here and you see it's like a dome or a bubble. I want you to think of this quake now that we know it's down below the plate or very close to the bottom. Think of it like a bubble of pressure coming up on the underside of the plate. A bubble. And it's coming up on all sides of the underside of the plate. Now look where the dome stretches out to. It stretches out to the north, all the way to the coast of Colombia. It goes across Venezuela. It also goes back over to the west. Now you might not know what's out to the west right there, but I will show you on the USGS map over here next to South America. Out here, the dome goes right out and around like that. I'll show you. And here's our stair step fracture zone on the south that goes back up here to our fracture zone that goes north and it comes back our fracture zone to the east to the cocos plate this is the nazca plate anyway the dome goes out that far now we have to watch out at the juncture here out at the pinnacle tip here where the juncture is and down to the south here where the juncture is, as well as on the other side of South America, up at Venezuela, and around out at the Mid-Atlantic Ridge. All sides of this will be hit. Now, the biggest of the bunch should come in next to this deep quake between our current sets of earthquakes, and this could go up to 7.5 in the next seven to 10 days, up to 7.5. So it's another warning I have to issue right now, which is for a new up to 7.5 quake. Now, where do we watch next to the big quake? Well, we find our current earthquakes and we look which way our arrows point. Notice arrows here point down to the south along the coast. And from our letter D, they point down to the south and down to the South Sandwich Islands. I would watch down to the south. Both sets of arrows point to the south. We're on the south side of the D. This means Chile. This means Chile between our current sets of earthquakes. So Bio Bio North, it's one of the more active earthquake zones on the planet. It's where the biggest earthquake in recorded history ever happened. 1960, a 9.5 earthquake struck there. Anyway, we're looking at less than a 9.5, way less. 7.5, but still that's huge. A, a 7 on land is a big deal down in Chile. So let the people in Chile know it's coming very soon. You have a deep earthquake down below. 7 to 10 days at the most. 7 days puts us to oh, a week from now to Wednesday of this coming week on the 29th. 10 days just puts us a few days beyond to the 1st. to April 2nd, actually. So it puts us to April 2nd. Wow. All right. So that's three large earthquakes that we're going to look for in the next seven to 10 days. That's a lot. That is a lot. Now up to the north, let's talk about Alaska. We also need to talk about Hawaii and the United States. Get that into the mix because I kind of forgot to do Hawaii in my last update. I'm sorry. <sighs> sorry, guys. <laughs> Your weatherman gets on, you know, it's a weather channel comes on. They're like, and they just skip Hawaii, you know, they come back. Sorry, guys. Ah, that's what you get with this new 21st century live stuff. Okay, let's go look at Hawaii really quick. What happened in Hawaii? Well, first of all, the number of earthquakes leveled off, but now looks like you're going back up. You leveled off. It went kind of quiet for a week. Now, I think you're going to be taking the next step up. But before we say seismic, the last few times that I've issued a warning for seismic to increase here, instead, a new lava flow breaks out. And you'll see uh, Doing Hawaii and Two Pineapples, you see their channels light up and a bunch of people jump in there and go to look and see what's going on, a new outbreak in the crater or something like that. It's something I'm not taking into consideration when I'm issuing my seismic warnings for Hawaii, that there would be some kind of magmatic release that could possibly interfere with that when the wave is passing through the magma chamber. But up to the north, we're at two different spots. 
we're all the way next to Mauna Kea on the northwest side. But more interestingly, we're at next to Hoala Lai on the northwest side of the big island. And let me just show you what's there for if you don't know about the two spots in Hawaii. So everybody's familiar with Hawaii. You've heard about it. Now, on Hawaii is the big volcano Mauna Loa that put off that new eruption a few months back, first time since the 1980s that Mauna Loa had gone. But now we're on the northwest side of Mauna Kea up here. On the northwest side of Mauna Kea, well, on the top of Mauna Kea are the observatories. They don't expect this to erupt anytime soon, and neither do I. We have a small earthquake on the north side. That's not a big deal. And it's not a big deal that the earthquake, the small earthquake striking over here at Huala Lai, it's a volcanic chain that goes, and it's ancient, goes down throughout right into the ocean. Some of these are very old. And the ones out in the ocean, of course, you can't see very well, but they're, of course, out there under seamounts. Now, whenever I see seismic activity coming in from the northwest side of Hawaii up here, whether it's Mauna Kea or Huala Lai, or even out further up to the north, what's the name of the one on the far north-north side? Hold on. Yeah, Kohala. If you ever see activity start coming in from up here, you need to really just look back up the chain. Look where it goes. It goes to the north, northwest, then makes a hard bend at midway. Just beyond it, goes to the north. Right up to Kamchatka, where we have the new blast up at Epico. The new fives on the bend of the plate boundary. And that's feeding energy. That wave is going up past Japan. You can see the spacing on the quakes on the USGS site today. Standing wave going up into Japan. Then it goes up and across into Alaska. But right there at the pinnacle tip, it's like an arrow. And energy flows down, out of there, down and over into Alaska, out of Alaska, and down into Hawaii. So it'll go over to the east side or to the right into Alaska. It'll come down and go over into Hawaii. And we tend to see similar sized earthquakes spread from Kamchatka to Alaska and from Kam Kamchatka down to Hawaii. And that was the third time I almost sneezed into the microphone. I am stopping myself live, man. I do not want to have to mute it. Okay, now let's go down to the United States out of Alaska, which Alaska did get hit. Alaska got hit next to the volcano that I warned. Technically, I warned right here for the five to hit. And instead, it hit here. Now we're watching the volcano here separately. Vaniamanoff volcano, just in case. I don't normally do... So uh, well, I, I normally do seismic forecasting. I don't normally do volcanic forecasting. Okay, let's go into the lower 48. Look at the United States. New four came rolling in in the northwest or on the west coast. I would consider this the northwest. Northwest California, Oregon, and Washington. But new 4.5, let's go look at the stations and see what it shows. I don't know if it's going to show anything Local stations, what do they show? We'll go down the list. We're going to throw out the high end, and we're going to throw out the low end. Low end, they're saying it's a 4.5. Now let's just see how high do we go. We have a 5.3 on the list, but we'll toss that out, like I said. The reason I toss out the high end and the low end is it really gives us a good broad swap in between of what really the earthquake was most likely. Now we're topping out so far 5.4. That's pretty high, but there's only one on the list so far. Oh, wait, there's a few. A few stations are a 5.5. Okay, if we start seeing a bunch of stations with fives, I'm going to start thinking this is a bigger quake. Yeah, okay, there's several guys. There's several stations are reporting in fives and upper fours. We can throw out the low-end fours and the threes, and we can throw out the high-end fives. And what does that leave us with? If we throw out the 5.1, 5.2, 5.3, 5.4, 5.4, 5.5, and we throw out the 4.5, 4.6, what does that leave us with? It leaves us with something like a 4.9 to 5. That's most likely what really hit along the coast. That's how we do it. 
when there's some question as to whether or not the authorities are going to pad the numbers or try to keep things looking low. Got to question it. So a new five came rolling in right down at the south side of the Juan de Fuca fracture zone after a bunch of activity came rolling in from the north. Now also, Colorado was a little bit bigger too, wasn't it? It sure was. It was a magnitude larger as well. It was a 4.8. We went and looked up the stations. What did I warn Southern Colorado for? I warned them for a 4.9 and a 4.8 hit. USGS downgraded it to a 3.8. You can go look at the stations. So many reporting. Who's right? A nerd in a cubicle at the USGS? A dork, I mean. Or, or an egghead. I'm sorry, I'm not name-calling. I'm not trying to name-call you. I get frustrated. When I get frustrated, my mind can't think proper. Outcome foul words. Don't do that, kids. Now let's go look at the earthquakes going across the North American Craton. Take a look at the screen. You might see the Craton diagram here. You see the rusty brownish color? I want you to compare the rusty brownish color to the earthquakes over the last 48 hours. Now look at the fours on the west coast. Then look at the threes going across over to the Midwest, over to Colorado and Texas. Then look at the twos reaching across. Notice anything? It matches the edge of the North American craton. Fours, threes, twos, threes, all the way across the plate. The only thing missing is a four in the middle of the plate because the wave is traveling across and it maintains energy. The standing wave, it is perfect. You can really see it. You can compare the craton diagram. Let me get that turned off to make sure it's off. And you can see the standing wave has spread out around the curved tank of North America. So these, imagine these as all twos and threes bending around the North American plate like a wave going around something, dropping off the quakes along the way. This is the force that causes the earthquakes. That's what we found. That's what we, that's what I found. The force that causes the earthquakes. They're not causing each other. It's not domino effect. There's a wave that's spreading out across North America over the course of a few days' time. It's dropping off the earthquakes along the way, and they're all about the same size because the wave saturates the plate, fills it with the same amount of energy almost, all the way across. Now you will see a little bit of drop in energy as the wave goes across the plate. It'll absorb, but when it bounces back into itself, it starts to go up, just like a wave in a wave tank. When it gets down to our end, the closest end, it reflects back into itself. It starts to build back up. Amplitude increases. The more you pump in, the quicker it pumps in, too. That also makes a difference if we start adding a bunch of energy quickly. It can really precipitate things, and we get the same-sized earthquakes from the west coast to the east coast, like those 5.9s that went across the plate back in 2011. Colorado 5.9, then Virginia 5.9. Edge of the craton. Okay, let's go look up the smaller earthquakes really quick and just see if there's anything worth actually dialing in on Google Earth. I did that in my last update. It took like an hour or more of looking up all the small earthquakes. One thing I do want to point out is that in my last update, I looked up the earthquakes here at the Nevada, Oregon, Northern California border region, and I told you whenever we see earthquake activity up here by Bittner Butte that we look out towards the Juan de Fuca for a new break to take place. And then what happened? A new break took place out in the Juan de Fuca on the south side, going up to 4.5, uh, again, 4.9 to 5. The only change that we have here, going across the northwest, is that we've moved over from Gravity Hill over next to the Hanford Nuclear Facility directly. All the other earthquakes still on there from yesterday in my update. Same for Yellowstone, nothing's changed there, but the number of earthquakes is actually dropped down at Yellowstone. That's about to change. I would expect a big swarm at Yellowstone over the next few days as the West Coast starts to shift and things start to move even more than they already are. Now that a new 5 struck up north, well, USGS 4.5, 
You can expect a new five down south down by L.A. and San Diego east of over by Salton Sea. Now, if it's big enough, you'll feel it in L.A. and San Diego, but I'm expecting it over along the plate boundary San Jacinto over next to the Imperial Fault. I mean, when the north moves, the south moves, and the middle moves. We're expecting new earthquake activity here in the middle already on the creeping section of the San Andres also to break. Any other spots that we need to watch? Probably at the California-Nevada border as well. I don't want to have four warnings going at once, though. It's pretty much the whole freaking state. That would be four separate earthquakes. It would be one up north, already hit. So, really, it's three quakes more. I already warned for the first one. Not bragging, I just have to tell you. First one, we already warned for it. Hit up north. Then down south would be the second. Along the creeping section would be the third. And over at the California-Nevada border would be the fourth. It would be... Four different 4.5s or 5s over the next several days. Hey, check it out. A rare earthquake has struck over here in New Mexico. What's going on there? Watrius. Watros, New Mexico. I've never heard of it. And I've never seen an earthquake over here. Over off the Craton to the east in New Mexico. I don't know what's there. It's just a 2.5, but it's enough to make the feed. What's on the it's on the map here? Do we have anything worth looking at? What is going on over here? What, 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 what we got going on there? Salt beds of some kind? A rest area and a highway? Fort Union National Monument once the largest post in the southwest what where is it the largest post in the southwest oh ah you know guys sometimes you just need to back it out ever so slightly to see that there's something of significance nearby. All right, we have the Turkey Mountains Caldera, the Santa Clara Mesa Volcanic Buttes, plural, and the Jerosa Mesa Volcanic Butte. La Las Mesas de Congelion West, and the Wagon Mound? What is this? The Wagon Mound. Great. Just, that's just, just great. That's great. It's great to have the mound there. It really is. I'm not going off on the people who built it or anything. I'm just saying that there are earthquakes striking next to these locations. It's starting to get a little suspicious. So the Turkey Mountains Caldera. That's a caldera, all right. That's big. That's ancient. Not much talk about it. I don't know anything about this thing. Very interesting. Okay. Looks like a giant eye. It just so happens to be also next to Wagon Mound and the biggest fort in the southwest that you can't find on the map here. Where is the fort? And it matters if there's a big fort here, guys. It really does. If, we, if there's some kind of giant star fort here or something. This is it? This is the fort? Nah. Nah, there's something not right about that. The whole thing's the fort? If it is, we got ourselves a giant, giant, giant fort that we should talk about in a separate broadcast there. Okay. Earthquake next to a rare location that just so happens to be a giant fort. How many of these are we going to have? I, I, I'm going to have to start keeping track. I, I mean, we're certainly in the hundreds at this point, which is how I found the topic to begin with. When I found the, the mound and the fort over on the New Madrid where these two earthquakes are that I showed in my last broadcast. These two quakes 
the one on New Madrid, is next to a giant old fort and Indian mound, Native American mound. How many are we going to get? It's getting bizarre. It's getting freaky, man. I, I, your teacher's getting freaked out. Your teacher's getting a little bugged out. I, I, this stuff's starting to weird me out a little bit. What's causing the earthquakes down below? There's something down in there. Are they funneling low frequency wireless power? What's going on? I found the Indian mounds up in Idaho. Same thing. Earthquake struck next to it. Giant Indian mounds right there. Nobody knew about them either. Had to make the Native American elders aware of them. I got thanked tremendously. People said I was a hero, right? I'm not a hero. I just found that the way I found it, an earthquake struck next to the dang place. So, all right. Now, let's go along the California coast and just see if anything's changed since yesterday. Ah, a new earthquake outbreak in the Bay Area. Now, I do need to go look this up. It says Oakland, California, but look, we got to go look this up. Anytime we get earthquakes in the Bay Area, I want to see what's there after what we found last time. In case you're not aware, we found a fort in the Bay Area. 4.5 to 5.0 earthquake struck in the Bay Area. And it was right below. Wait, what's this place? Tennis courts. The tennis club. Is this the Infinite Jest? The Enfield Tennis Academy? What else do we have here? The Richard C. Trudeau Conference Center. Anything else here nearby? Caballo Hills? I'm just looking. There might not be anything of any significance except for fault zones here. But when you see what we found just to the north, you'll see why I'm inspecting so close. And I will show you what we found up north. So it looks like we've got the tennis club. It looks like we've got a bunch of really nice houses Mansions, as we might call them. Some kind of elementary school. Okay, now I said I was going to show you what we found with the other earthquake. Let me zoom in and show that to you. So this, we had a 5.0 earthquake downgraded to 4.1. Down below this satellite array here. And you see this? This is a trash dump. They built a circular trash dump and a circular satellite array in the middle of an ancient star-shaped bastion fort that has been abandoned and forgot about over time. 250 feet long, 250 feet tall. And to see the terrain and to see all that, let me turn on the 3D on here so you can see it. This is a classic bastion fort shape. Now in the middle is the satellite array which you don't normally put down deep down in the ground, using this like its its own satellite dish to project up. And then this is suspicious in the middle of it. Anyway, an earthquake below it is what drew my eye to it, which is why I'm spending so much time here looking to see, is there anything of any significance nearby? Anything of any shape even remotely similar? It would be hard to tell here because they've done a lot of shaving out. Anytime you see a big series of mansions or government facilities getting built, you should probably check just to make sure. So coming out of the Bay Area, we go down through the creeping section of the San Andreas. We've picked up to 3.0. We go down to and jump over into the valley. We're at Avenal, California. We jumped over into the valley. If you watched my update, from a day and a half ago, this hadn't happened yet. Earthquakes had reached down the San Andreas, and I told you to watch over here for a jump over to the valley, over to our oil pumping operations. That's now happened today. Just a series of small quakes. The wave is spreading out across over to the drill points. Oil and gas. 
oil and gas drilled out next to the famous San Andreas. All the way down it, all of this is drilled. Every little bit of it. Here, let me show you. These are all wells. Look how many there are. And they just go all the way along down the San Andreas. They perforated it right up to the edge of it. Why? Somebody somewhere knew something a long time ago that I have figured out now. And they've kept it hidden from the general public. Why would they drill along the San Andreas like that? All the way up here to the creeping section. Unless they wanted to divert the seismic flow down into the valley and away from L.A. and divert it down to the Mojave. And guess what? It goes over down to the Mojave now. Now, when there's a big flow coming down the creeping section, it does both. It's like a flowing river or a flooding river. This would be the bypass that goes across the valley. And when a big flow comes down, it just keeps going and goes right into North L.A. So it doesn't fully stop it. But somebody somewhere had to know about the seismic flow. And when I came along and found it, it was denied by all the professionals because it's been hidden for some reason. I don't know why, though. Why would you hide it? Wouldn't you, like, beat your chest about making that discovery of a seismic flow and tell the world that you could forecast based upon it and start to plot the trajectory of the flooding river of seismic energy like you'd plot a flood on a map when it rains? Why wouldn't you do it? Somebody somewhere stopped that. But why? I'm not Sherlock. I don't know why. I'm just asking the rhetorical why. It's insane. Now, this spot in the L.A. Basin I've talked about many times. This is the old oil pumping operation from back in the late 1800s, early 1900s. extends from the refinery. That's now the refinery, but this used to be drilled all the way across and up to the north through the airport to the Baldwin Hills. Here, these are the leftover remnants of the oil pumping operations that are here today, still numbering in the tens of thousands of wells, but all this used to be drilled. They then built houses on top, and that's Inglewood. In case you don't know the locations here, Inglewood, next to the airport, former oil field. That's where the quakes are. Over to the east, we have a line of quakes and a stack now, stacking up. We're stacking up down to the south, and we're going to see a new earthquake strike down here, up to 5.0. On land, most likely on land, next to Salt and Sea. Not just anywhere next to Salt and Sea. We're going to go between our set of earthquakes down here to the south. There's like two lines of quakes going through the coast. This is on the Elsinore Fault and on the San Jacinto Fault, west of Salt and Sea. Hardly any earthquakes over to the east on the San Andreas or Imperial directly. Once we get down to the south, the Imperial carries on down into Mexico. Let me show you what's there. Why are we going to get a quake there at the south tip of Salt Sea? How about the volcano and the drill points there? They have a volcano and drill points here where they drilled in to get steam. Geothermal. The rest of the quakes right down here along the border next to our other geothermal drill points and major electrical generation huh, pyramid construction and aggregates <laughs> ah nice love it nothing go wrong there do you know the do you know the pyramids were made from aggregate i'm going to i'm going to let you in on a little secret the giant pyramids weren't carved from stone well, I guess they were. They quarried them out way far away, those blocks. And everybody was trying to figure out how they got the blocks to the pyramid building site. Turns out what they did at the quarry was they pulverized it into a mix called geopolymer mix. It's like concrete, but twice as strong, according to Texas A&M University. And it takes some kaolin clay, some sand, some limestone, and sodium carbonate. You mix it together with some seashells and it looks just like regular stone. It lasts even longer. Anyway, 
they pulverized that stuff in powder and brought it in bags and then mixed it at the job site and put the it made a perfect seam that's how also they did it down at Machu Picchu down in South America with those perfect seams between the stones that's because they were poured next to each other guys it turns out humans had the technology back in the day to make their own stone. And I'm doing bunny ears right now around the word stone because it would be man-made geopolymer stone that looks and is exactly similar to granite and limestone. And yes, you can synthesize both with the kale and clay. <laughs> Crazy, right? Kale and clay and carbonate. Sodium carbonate, kale and clay, water glass, and limestone aggregate or granite aggregate. Amazing stuff. Let's go back to the start of the update. Let's go back to the very start. Big earthquake struck on both sides of the planet today. Whether they're 7s or 6.5s, USGS says they're the same size. 6.5s on both sides of the planet. But I'll say the earthquake over here at India, going up into Afghanistan, it was bigger. It was. It had to be a 7-ish if you felt it all the way down in central India. Now, South America is up for debate. It just happened in the past several hours. We won't know about it until likely tomorrow. I'll probably start getting reports from people down there telling me that it was a 7 as well. Whether it's a 6.5 or a 7, it's a half magnitude difference, guys. It's a big amount of movement on both sides of the planet. I'm looking for more. And to go the next step up. Again. We should go the next step up one more time. And then we should top out, I think. I think we'll top out. All right. So, do you have an earthquake plan? You know, all this talk about quakes, but, you know, just simply put, do you know what to do when an earthquake hits? Take shelter underneath a table or a desk. Now, internationally, you're going to be told to run outside. I don't know if that's the best idea, guys. Unless it's a stone stack structure, you probably want to shelter in place underneath a table or a desk. If the building's at risk of collapse, then you want to go outside. But if you're going outside, please, will you take the time to pick a spot ahead of time to go to so you're not just running around? You have to almost treat this like a fire drill. If you're going to go outside, you better know where you're going and have a checklist of people that are supposed to meet you there. Final point, the emergency kit. Are you going to do it? Are you going to finally do it? Finally, after 10 years of me telling you, are you going to finally do it? You're going to have the emergency kit? You're going to update it? Have you updated your emergency kit for summer or fall or spring or winter? Whatever time of year it is there for you. You need to have food and water. Food and water is a good idea just to have on hand anyways. Did, didn't the lockdowns teach you anything about having food and water or food and drink on hand? I'm just lecturing you. I'm just trying to shame you into doing it. Will you please develop an emergency kit? Change of clothes, set of shoes, batteries, first aid, sanitation, all that great stuff. Put it into a bag, have it ready to go. You'll probably end up using it for something else other than an earthquake, but you probably will end up using it at some point in your life. Okay. All right. Let's wrap it up. Don't be scared. The motto applies. I really mean it. It's catchy and it's rhymes and it's cheesy and it's hokey, and but it really stands. Don't be scared. You need to be prepared. I'll be back at a moment's notice if anything else goes down. But when I mean be, be prepared, the emergency kit, and then you can watch the flow of earthquakes come your way if you're along these plate boundaries. You can watch it come your way like a flood. It doesn't make the flood any less serious, but it can take some of the fear out of a flood if you know it's coming. Right? I mean, it doesn't stop the water from getting to you. It still sucks when the flood water gets there. But if you stick around and you just put your fingers in your ears or you don't want to know what the flood stage is on the river you live next to, you're one of those people that's on the roof of your house wondering where the water came from. 
You're just sitting there and you're like, oh no, where did the water come from? Oh no. And everybody else is like waving at you for two years to go out and prepare for a flood because you live along a river. There'll be other people who don't need to pay attention as much that the flow goes around them entirely most of the time, 99.9% of the time. There's other people who need to pay attention tremendously. Greece, Italy, Turkey, you're on the river. Unfortunately, or well, I don't ever wish earthquakes on anybody, but I would rather see it go through Russia, out in the middle of nowhere, go across Siberia, up across and out to the North Pole. Not that I want to see Russia get hit, but I'd rather see that happen then have it go through Europe, but the river goes through Europe. It is what it is. Anyway, all right, let's save this. I'm saving it. We're going to save it. I wasn't cracking as many jokes in this update because you know what? People are going off on me for cracking jokes. What a bunch of... The world's real serious right now, so... People want me to be real serious like they are. And I'm, you know, I, I, I will be. I am. I, you know, I, I take earthquakes seriously. People were going, seriously, go read the messages down below is a lot. They're like, why are you joking around and laughing when there's serious earthquakes? And I'm not laughing at the quakes, guys. When I do my update, I try to be as positive as possible. Because it would be real easy to go the other way. Like everybody else. And I'd rather generate and spark an interest in seismic studies than a fear of seismic. Imagine if your meteorologist got on, had a quavering voice. Oh, oh no, we're gonna, we're gonna have a tornado tomorrow. And they come in, they're like, oh God. Oh, they're like, real serious, real serious. I don't know. I don't know. People want what they see on TV. And I'm never going to be that. Not in a million years. And I would dare say that that way of doing it isn't proper. And that we need real meteorologists giving us the real weather, more like Reed Timmer than a polished head on TV reading you the news and telling you that everything's always normal. Except for when they're pushing climate change, in which case then they everything's abnormal all the time, right? Okay. All right, guys. Much love. I'll be back.